You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. The biennial Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg McClellan Competition for Solo Performance provides advanced Manitoba musicians a generous monetary prize and celebrated performance opportunity. Presenting a total purse of $20,000, three finalists perform alongside the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra on April 20th. Now, we'll be introducing you to those outstanding musicians on Winnipeg's Classic 107, beginning with mezzo-soprano Geneva Halverson, who joins me now. Hey, Geneva. Hello. Well, it's so great to see you. I, I, I should say we went through music school together a few years ago, and I'm so thrilled to see of your success in the McClellan competition. Thanks, man. It has been, uh, it has been a time. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. So before we get to all that, uh, you know, good stuff that is that is uh, the McClellan competition, I, I want to chat a little bit more about about you. I know you come from a musical family and correct me if I'm mistaken, but you originally entered the Desotel Faculty of Music as a, a piano major. Is that is that right? I did. Um, I did. I've been playing piano since I was five. I took piano lessons at a very, very young age. Um, I did the thing where my family tried to teach me for a while and then they kind of went, whoa, you are doing like a book a month. <laughs> and then signed me up for piano lessons and well, the rest is history. But yeah, I took piano lessons from a very young age, took dance from a very young age. So I was a dance kid, took like, spent more time in a studio than I did at school. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then can you talk about making that transition, going from being a piano major to ultimately becoming a voice major and then going on to a, a post back in opera performance? Well, it was kind of a bit of a silver lining thing because I, yeah, originally auditioned and got in as a pianist at the U of M. Um, then I sustained some wrist injuries. I got tendonitis in both of my wrists hmm. because one is just not good enough. <laughs> so I got tendonitis in both of my wrists. And then um, I had to make a choice that I had to go, well, I cannot perform concert repertoire on piano because you, as much as we all wish we could be Glenn Gould, we can't all make careers playing Bach. So um, I had to basically make a choice. I'm like, well, I'm either going to essentially do education as a piano major or switch over to voice where I could conceivably make a career, well, hopefully as a performer. Um, and since I'd already been doing a lot of musical theater, that transition was uh, pretty obvious. And I found also that the new direction suited me better, suited my personality better. Um, I didn't love all the, ex like it's extremely isolating as a pianist. I mean, as singers, we are, even if you're more introverted, it is really great to be able to share your music. Like you go into rehearsal, you see other people. As a pianist, you're playing, practicing alone all the time and you're even in rehearsal like it's maybe a trio that you're playing with like there's no the sense of community is just not the same so yeah and i mean like you say i mean you, you get maybe a trio there's a lot of chamber opportunity but as a singer um i mean the choir opportunities alone let alone all the master classes and and you certainly found success i mean you talk about it being a silver lining you, you won the zeta bernstein competition for german leader you, yeah. you won uh, the gilbert and sullivan trophy was that for mad margaret am i remembering that correctly that was for mad margaret yeah it was um that was also like the first mezzo aria i ever did because i had started out as a soprano and then i my boys teacher at the time kind of went i think you should try Shirley curls a lark I'm like okay and and you nailed it. I mean, I remember that performance. It was it was I was there. It was great. It was fantastic. And yeah, a, a rightful win indeed. I mean, you're talking about um, opera and, and making that switch and, and, and it being a sort of silver lining. But um, opera sort of runs in the family for you, doesn't it? Can you tell us a little bit about your your grandfather? Um, that's my great grandfather. Great grandfather. There we go. Yeah. Hold on one second. I've got him on my. I've got him on my. Uh... He's my inspiration for my studio. There he is. This is my great grandfather. That was his program headshot wow. when he saw the Leipzig Opera in Germany. Yeah. And he was a young bass baritone, Emil Hack, and he sung in the chorus for a while. Then he also sung, he was just becoming a soloist. He was singing, oh, I forget. Now at the top of my head, I forget what operas he was doing, but he was just getting some leading roles before he was drafted. So. That was basically his career. We don't have any recordings of him because they were all destroyed in the war, but we do have some newspaper newspaper reviews of him, which is very cool. That's really incredible. Um, and uh, drafted into the the Second World War, correct? 
Second World War. Yeah, I mean, uh, what a what a story. It's incredible that you have those clippings, that you have his photo. People are going to have to check it out on the website because radio, you know, you can't see it. But we'll put the video up on the website, classic107.com, the, the headshot there. Um, and, and now you carry out his his legacy. So tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since uh, since completing your studies at the, the Faculty of Music at the U of M. Uh, well, oh gosh. I mean, besides fighting with squirrels, I mean, that is a major thing because I have bird feeders and like, I really don't like them. I've got, I know it has nothing to do with this right now, but it is honestly something that's going on in my life. I have these, I had to go to Dollarama, like a peasant and get like these little bowls to uh -huh. put, I had to cut bowls to basically put over top of the birth feeders and the, and the squirrel still gets in there. They're very crafty, very crafty creatures. Smart. They're smarter than me. Anyway, um, since then, um, what have I been doing? I, well, when I graduated with my post back, um, I had a long bout, I would say about like almost three, four years of really bad performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I decided to kind of go, well, maybe performing is not for me. And I'm going to open up a studio and it, a teaching studio. And it went really well. I also wasn't really expecting that. I, you know, teach between right now, 35 and 40 students. Well, that's a big studio. Yeah. It's, it's quite something. And they're all, you know, I teach some piano students, but I, they are the bulk of them voice students between 12 and 18. They're all in high school. They're all hyper ambitious. They're really fantastic. And that's basically what I do every day from like two 30 to nine o'clock I'm teaching and Saturday, Sunday as well. Friday's my day off <laughs> for right now. Friday's yeah, yeah, yeah. My day off. Um, and what else I did? I caught the running bug, mm. which a crazy thing. Um, did wonders for anxiety. Did wonders for. I mean, I could go on about that forever, but um, it did a lot for finding a purpose again, and it was really a great discovery um it did wonders for singing as well because it helps with stamina it helps with breast support i feel it almost every day when i go for a run then i come home and sing my singing's way better than if i am not active during the day so um in any event then in that time i also i actually really hesitated talking about this because it there's a perception that the person i was before wasn't as good as the person I am now, but part of um, the reason why I decided to start going back to performing again is I lost about 130 pounds over doing um, a lot of running and a lot of um, just like fitness discovery and stuff like that. And after that happened, I thought, well, maybe, maybe that unlocked some kind of confidence thing that I had. And in large part, I think it did. And I can go into auditions now and I don't stand like this anymore. I don't like close myself off. I'm really confident. Um, so there was a big shift in that for me. And I think almost in a sense, this whole COVID thing of us being locked in or whatever allowed me the time to kind of be a little bit of a butterfly in a chrysalis. <laughs> I just kind of work on myself and work on myself. And then now I'm cocooned for well, you know, I think that's exactly it. I mean, like you say, there, there's a lot to unpack there. But now, as we all start to emerge um, from from the COVID-19 pandemic cautiously uh, and, and optimistically, um, you know, you're starting to spread your wings. And here you are, um, your most recent accomplishment, a McClellan finalist. How does how does that feel coming out of the, the pandemic and all that led you to this point? It's real. I, I remember I called Renata, who was my pianist for the competition. I called Renata like the second I saw that email and I could barely formulate words. <laughs> and I mean, there are only two other situations where that would be a thing. That's if I met Michael Buble and there was one other one and I forget now. It's usually something to do with Christmas because I'm obsessed with Christmas anyway. But I was completely, I saw that email. I'm like, this is a lie. This is a troll. They're trolling me. This isn't real. And then I had to reopen it and looked at it again. I'm like, nope, that's real. That's the thing. Well, and here, you, here you are. I mean, I'm just, I'm so thrilled for you. I, I so sincerely, um, the, the, the performance is coming up on, on the 20th uh, with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. What are you going to be singing in the finals? The, the big last question for you. What am I going to be singing? Well, 
here you go. We are going to start with Gounod, um, Stefano's aria, Confetti Blanche Tutorelle from Romeo and Juliet, which is Stefano's aria. It's basically a big wingman aria. God, I love that aria. It's just, it's so fun. He's just out there and, ha and in front of the castle, and he's like, sure, Romeo, my man, I'll protect this castle for you. No big deal. I'm your man. And and after that, I'm doing Mahler. We've got mm. Kinder Totenlieder. Mm. Um, I'm doing two things from Kinder Totenlieder, two pieces. After that is, um, oh, before that is Elgar. Wow, I should know what pieces I'm doing. All right. Still got a while. You still got a while. That's fine. Still got 10 days. Yeah. No, nine. Nine days. Um, before that is Elgar, see pictures. Beautiful. Um, famously written for Dame Clara Butt. The famous mm -hmm. English contralto. Mm -hmm. um, so that is where corals lie from Elgar's Sea Pictures. Then the Mahler. Then after the Mahler is um, Non So Piu from the Marriage of Figaro, because Cherubino is my main man. Um, I even I have a good pun. I punned. I would got TikTok now because I'm hip with the youths, and I've made a username that all. That I think this is the most. I'm more proud about this than anything else. It's Kerobin Bro. Oh no. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I can't okay. I love myself so much. <laughs> so, um non so few and then closing with um non pimesta from Chenarantala. Wow. What a, like I mean, talk about a, a wide ranging program, um, really showcasing some some different facets from music. Uh, yeah. I imagine really going to show the breadth of, you know, what you can do as as a mezzo and, and what an opportunity to uh, to emerge, to spread those musical wings and uh, take off with the WSO. Uh, Geneva, thank you so much for catching up. It was a pleasure. So good to see you. So good to see you, too. Perfect. And you can see Geneva performing on Wednesday, April 20th, 7.30 p.m. Uh, at Jubilee Place. That's at MBCI 173 Talbot Avenue. Um, you can find more details up at classic107.com or purchase tickets by visiting the Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg website, wmcwpg.ca.